this section, we will be talking about the crucial genetic terminology. We will explain the next concepts, the key concepts about DNA, genes, and chromosomes. I know this topic can be quite complex, but we will try to use simple language. And as a result of this section, you will understand the foundations of genetics. Okay, so Sophia, um, I'm another, I have another question for you. Um, have you ever wondered what exactly a gene is? Oh, yes, Marine, I have, because it's such an important piece of information for our body. They are like building blocks of our life. And I think it's really important to discuss what they are made of, because they are so, so important in our genetics information, in our genetic makeup and our features. Absolutely. Genes are made up of genetic letters. And I think we've um, we've kind of mentioned that in one of our previous videos, the exact makeup, but they're just like the larger structure of our genetic material. They are stretches of DNA that reside on our chromosomes and contain the instructions for building and maintaining the living organism. And hopefully you'll have an image pop up on your screen where you can see a chromosome um, where you can see a piece of a gene, genetic makeup, um, that uh, makes part of the whole DNA um, sequence and that DNA is intertwined into the chromosome. So we've mentioned before, the chromosome holds the DNA and a little section of the DNA is basically a gene that holds the information for a particular um, structural component. Oh, yes, definitely. And genes are responsible for telling our cells how to create the proteins necessary for our life. For example, a dystrophin gene will tell how to make a, a dystrophin protein that will go and sit in our muscles. Precisely, and, and genes are, act as a direct in, uh, direct instructions to make proteins. They give instructions, they will say make dystrophin. They're like the blueprints that guide our cells in performing their specific functions. I mean, we, we are focused on dystrophin, but pretty much everything in, our, in us is dictated by genes. You know, that's what makes us who we are. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? So genes are not a standard size. They can vary greatly in size. In humans, they can range from a few hundred DNA bases or genetic letters to more than 2 billion genetic letters. So there was a so-called human genome project that was trying to figure out how many genes a human genome has. And they have established that uh, an average human has uh, between 20,000 and 25,000 genes. So if you imagine this, this teeny tiny structures of a chromosome that sits in our cell, yeah. it contains up to 25,000 genes. That's incredible. Absolutely. Like that, that, that is a lot of genes. And it's amazing how, how it is stored in our body and how it's conserved through generations and and how a person inherits two copies of each gene one from each parent this is why we often resemble our parents or share traits with our siblings for example i mean most genes are the same in all people but there's a small percentage less than one percent that can have a slight difference between individuals i mean what we're saying is we all have eyes but we all can have different colored eyes so we all have the gene for eyes but the color of eyes is going to be different. Yeah, and those slight differences, they contribute to our unique physical features. They are basically differences in the sequence of DNA bases or DNA letters uh, within the same gene, and they are called, scientifically called, alleles. They are like small variations in the genetic code that contribute to the distinct phys physical uh, characteristics we all possess, each of us possess. So that's what makes us who we are. And that's what makes us unique. Absolutely. And that's incredible. With, with so many genes and variation, it must be quite a challenge to keep track of them all. Um, scientifically speaking, I mean, therefore, scientists have developed a system to keep track of the genes by giving them unique names. So since gene names can be quite long, there are also assigned symbols, uh, which are short combinations of letters and sometimes numbers. I mean, um, to date, we don't understand all of the human genetic makeup. As we speak, we're discovering more and more genes for different things uh, that 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 happen in our body or controlled by these 
the, this DNA in our body. So we are still trying to figure out the whole recipe manual per se. Yeah, this system is very clever. It, it must make it much more manageable to communicate about specific genes and their functions between different in, uh, scientific institutions, scientists, and in the scientific papers as well. Yeah, certainly. And I think because, you know, we're a global society in a way, you know, we need to share information. We can't spend time and money and effort duplicating the same thing. So, so the naming and the symbol system for genes allows scientists from different disciplines and countries around the world to collaborate and share information effectively. And it's essential for advancing our understanding of genetics and its role in shaping life, essentially. So that's very, very important. Yeah, understanding genes and their incredible complexity is truly fascinating. And it's incredible how these small units of heredity hold the key to our physical traits and our uniqueness. Here at Action Duchenne, we are committed to inform, but also support you through your Duchenne journey. If you'd like to talk about anything raised in this video, please feel free to contact us on 07535 four nine eight five zero six or alternatively email us at info at action thank you